All right. Welcome to the Productivity Show, a podcast where we believe you can get the important things done without having to sacrifice your health, your family, and things that matter to you. My name is Brooks Duncan from Asian Efficiency, where we help people become more productive in work and in life. And I am joined by my sometimes co-host, Marmel. Uh, she is our scrum master. She is our wearer of many hats. She is my reminder to update the various things I need to remind. <laughs> and uh, really, excited to have her back on the podcast. So Marmel, how's it going? Been good. Um, I just came from like, I think I was out for, for three days last week. So I'm feeling very energized and good to be back here in the podcast. All right. Sounds like we have you on at the perfect time then. <laughs> All right. So this episode, I'm actually looking forward to this episode. The, this episode was actually Marmel's idea, which is why I wanted to have Marmel on the podcast for this one. And for those who are longtime listeners of the Productivity Show, uh, for those who don't know, the Productivity Show it has been around since like 2015 or so. And this is episode 404. So we've been around for a while. Uh, at the beginning, whenever we had a guest on, the host would end it by asking basically the same three questions every time. They'd ask, what's your book? What's your tool and what's your frog? And what that means is for the book, for example, uh, what we ask is like, what's a book you are loving right now? Or maybe you would recommend to the audience. Uh, a tool is what's a tool that helps you get your book What's a tool that helps you get your best work done? So it could be an app, it could be literally a physical tool or device, or it could be anything really, anything that helps you get your best work done. Uh, and Marmel, what do we mean when we say frog? I think people can figure out the other two, but, but frog sounds a little weird. Uh, maybe you could tell us what we mean when we ask what a frog is. Yeah, when we talk about a frog, it's uh, basically a project or something that uh, you want uh, to focus on. So for example, uh, like a few years ago, um, I wanted to run a marathon. So that was my frog for like a, a couple uh, a couple of months. So another example of a frog could be if you're a writer and you're writing a book. So, you know, that is your frog. It's basically when you wake up um, in the morning, um, that's the, your big to do for that day that you're going to work on, you know, on, on, on that frog. So we do have a, a lot of um, a lot of a lot of materials when it comes to eating your frog. So we have a blog post, and we'll link to that in the show notes as well. It's it's called "Eat That Frog: Do Your Most Important Task in the Morning," and this concept of eating your frog was actually popularized by Brian Tracy. He has a book called "Eat That Frog: Twenty One Great Ways to Stop Procrastinating," and also we'll, we'll link to that in in the show notes as well. Yeah. So like I said, this is something we used to do every episode. So we thought we would do a throwback this time. But instead of asking our guests, uh, Marmel and I are going to share our current books, our current tools and our current frogs, uh, maybe as well as share some from your fellow TPS listeners and our Productivity Academy members as well. Now, next episode, we're going to be taking a little detour. We're going to be going back to talking about GTD. So what we're going to be talking about is how to adapt GTD to your needs, just because you use getting things done doesn't mean you have to do it a certain way. You can adapt it. And so we're going to be talking about how we do that. And like we always start every single episode, we are going to start with our top three resources. So this time I will share my top three resources. And resource number one is YouTube Premium. So this is something that I've been spammed with <laughs> suggestions for for a very long time. Uh, but I happen to be doing a project where I'm watching a lot of YouTube videos. And uh, I decided to give it a try. And this is, I guess this is a trick you can probably only use once, but at least for me, uh, they were offering three free months to try it out. So I figure three months should be enough to do what I need to do. Uh, but the nice thing about YouTube Premium is there's no ads, so that's great. Uh, kind of like our TPS Plus membership, uh, but also you can download videos as well. So that's been huge for me if I'm at my kid's soccer practice and that sort of thing. Uh, I can have some YouTube videos downloaded to my iPad uh, and then watch it. Right. So YouTube Premium. So I have no idea if I'm going to keep it past the trial, uh, but even if you only have one month free, uh, it's still a great resource. So that's number one. Number two is a book. It's called Winning on Purpose, The Unbeatable Strategy of Loving Customers. So this was written by the person who created the NPS or Net Promoter Score, or they kind of changed it to Net Promoter System. So those are those questions you always get. How likely are you recommend? 
how likely are you to recommend uh, whatever you're using to a friend or colleague? Uh, we send them out as well. And uh, the author kind of revisits the NPS and expands on the general concept of loving your customers, not just focusing on that one score. Uh, and I thought it was a really good book. My wife's company was her management team, which she's a part of, was going through it for work. Uh, and then I stole the book off uh, our, her bookshelf and I uh, read it myself. So I really liked it. That's number two. And number three is an AirPods case with an AirTag holder. So I actually bought this for my son for his birthday. And so it's a silicon Air AirPod case, which I which I like and can be handy. However, this has a little section where you can slip in an AirTag. And the reason I bought it is he kept losing his AirPods all the time. So this way I get, gave him that and gave him an AirTag. So now he can never lose his AirPods and will always be able to find it no matter where it is. So I'll have a link to all of those things, including the resources Marmel talked about in the show notes at theproductivityshow.com slash 404. All right, let's get into our books, our tools, and our frogs. And I thought I would share something kind of interesting because for those who don't know, uh, I was way before I joined the AE team uh, and way before I was involved in the podcast, I was actually the second ever guest on the Productivity Show way back in episode number seven. So this is the Productivity Show episode 404. I was the guest on episode seven. And like I said, back then we used to ask our guests, in this case myself, what our book tool and frog is. So I thought I'd go back and look at what my book, what my tool and what my frog was way back in uh, 20, January 2015 and see what I think of my answers uh, seven years later. So uh, we're going to do some flashback here. So for the book, uh, the book I recommended back in January 2015 was The One Thing, The Surprisingly Simple Truth About about Extraordinary Results by Gary Keller and Jay Papasan. Uh, so I'm kind of glad that I recommended that one. It's still on my bookshelf. Sometimes I still grab it and look through it. And basically the concept of that is that no matter what problem you have, chances are there's one like keystone thing that you can either eliminate or do that will unlock and make everything else unnecessary. Now that's kind of like hyping it up a little bit, I'm gonna say, uh, but it is always true that there's one thing often one thing that can get you unstuck. Uh, and I thought this was a really good book. Have you ever read that book, Marmel? Uh, no, but I've heard you and Tan talk about it. Uh, yeah, I recommend it. It's still a great book. So uh, my recommendation from January 2015 still holds up. <laughs> So now I'll go on my tool. So uh, I kind of cheated at that time. I picked two tools. Uh, number one is Alfred. So Alfred is a, a software tool that we talked about on the podcast before. Uh, and even uh, all these years later, seven years later, I still use Alfred all day, every single day. Uh, we had a training when Tan and I were in the Philippines and we got the entire team on Alfred as well. And so there's all these pictures of me hovering over Marmel, <laughs> uh, uh, showing uh, Marmel you how to use Alfred. Uh, just out of curiosity, do you still use Alfred? I definitely do. I'm, I'm curious. I don't even know. Do you, you're allowed to say no, uh, but do you still yes. use Alfred? <laughs> yes, I still am. <laughs> like, awesome. um, I cannot not have it after you installed it. <laughs> Yeah, so what Alfred is, is, is a tool that basically lets you control almost everything on your computer uh, using your keyboard. Uh, and I mean, you can use your mouse too, mouse too uh, but what it lets you do is like manipulate files, launch applications, open files, copy, do like all sorts of different automations and stuff like that. It's a great Mac automation tools. It's absolutely free. Uh, I recommend the power pack, which you do have to pay for. Uh, but, uh, but even if you just use the free one, it's still really, really good. So Alfred is my second, my tool. Uh, and then I cheated and I listed a second one, which is OmniFocus premium posts, which is, uh, and the reason I listed that is because <laughs> uh, RIP, uh, that is a product that agent efficiency used to have. Uh, we don't we don't have it anymore, but really uh, that was the product that really got me cemented and helped me with my OmniFocus workflow uh, way back in, I don't even know when, probably like 2012 or 2013 or something like that. Uh, and still to this day, I'm using a lot of what I learned from that product. So uh, Asian Efficiency has OmniFocus resources on the blog. Unfortunately, we don't have OmniFocus premium posts anymore, uh, but we do have some alternates that I'll link to on the show notes as well. 
Uh, and then number three was my frog. So at the time I was working on a big update to one of my uh, paperless guides, which sadly is no longer available. Uh, however, if you wanna learn about some similar concepts to what I was working on at that time, uh, and kind of like the evolution of that, uh, we'll have a link to a free webinar that Tan did about productivity and efficiency systems. Uh, so we'll link to that as well. And that covers uh, some of that same ground. So that is what I was doing back in January 2015. I don't know if it's good or bad that a lot of it is very, uh, very similar, uh, but it just goes to show you that uh, if you choose timeless tools and read timeless materials, uh, it can still pay off years and years later. Uh, so Marmel, I won't ask you what you were doing in January 2015, uh, but I am just curious. Let's get started with our book, Tool and Frog, uh, and I will give you the floor for the first one. Uh, so what is your book that you're recommending? For today, <laughs> um, I would like to recommend Ikigai, uh, The Japanese Secret to a Long and Happy Life. And this one uh, was written by Hector Garcia and Francis Morales. I'm not sure if I'm saying his name correctly. I hope I am. There are other other books, but I I like uh, this one in in particular. But basically, um, ikigai uh, means your reason for being. You know, they say that this is the reason why a lot of Japanese they live like more than a hundred you know years old and you know still very happy, still very strong. So I I got curious um, about about the book and you know I think um, it helped me a lot. Um, I'm not gonna say that I have reached my ikigai. Um, I don't think I, I I know it for sure yet. And you know what? That's fine, because it's also true that our purpose can change. Like for example, when I was a, when I was younger. For me, my dream, and for me, it would make me really happy if I become a pilot. But unfortunately, math and I do not agree, and I have terrible eyesight. <laughs> so it kind of changed, you know, through the uh, through the years. So um, when you read this, uh, when you read this book, um, it we will talk about, you know, the the elements of of ikigai. There are four elements of ikigai. Um, for you to reach that level we're in, you are really happy. You need to reach, you know, all four, which which is your vocation, your passion, your mission, and profession. So, when we talk about vocation, it is what are you good at? We're talking about skills, right? Um, you can really be good at something and not like it, which is very true, right? Um, next is passion. What do you love? You know, um, what do you love to do? The flip side of it, you could really love something and you don't, you're not really skillful at it. I remember Alice's example, like you could, you could love to, yeah, like you love to sing, you really love to sing, but you're a terrible singer, but you just love to sing, right? And then the third one is what the world needs or, uh, or your, or your mission. Um, um, maybe the, when you say word, it's kind of a big word. We could, you know, talk about the community. What does your community community need? And then fourth, it's your profession or what can you be paid for? So reaching the peak of Ikigai or knowing what your purpose is, making sure that you have all four, that um, you have your vocation, you're skilled at it, you love it. Um, it is something that your community needs or the world needs and at the same time you're being paid uh to do it right and um i also want to i also want to plug in a video that alice ferris <laughs> she's she's actually one of our productivity academy members she has a vi uh, she has a video um in youtube about um ikigai or living with more ikigai she, she also talks about um how how she uh, found out what her ikigai uh, ikigai is. So I recommend reading that book and watching Alice's uh, video. We're going to link uh, to that in the show notes. Oh, this is great. Uh, this is a great su suggestion. And a Alice was actually recently on the podcast. We should mention that as well. Uh, she was yeah. on TPS 399. So go to theproductivityshow.com forward slash 399 for that. Uh, and this is a great recommendation. Number one, because it's a book I have not read yet, but kind of like what you said about the one thing, it's this book that's like recommended all around me, but I haven't actually read it yet. Uh, and I actually just bought it for my wife not too long ago, and she's been reading it and recommending it. And it's literally the next book on 
on my to read list. <laughs> so as soon as I finish the current book that I'm reading, I'm going to be reading that. So um, I'm glad to know that this is the one that you recommend because that's uh, pretty high praise. So I will definitely make sure to check that out. All right, so Marmel's coming in strong with a solid first <laughs> pick for her book. Uh, <laughs> uh, I will share my pick for my book also. And my book is called 4,000 Weeks Time Management for Mortals. And this is a book, I'm trying to remember where I first came across this as one of those ones where it's all of a sudden, you know, people are kind of talking about, so I checked it out as well. And uh, I thought it was really good. It, it The big ideas for this book is that and the reason it's called 4,000 weeks is because a person who lives to 80 years old uh, only has 4,000 weeks on the earth. And, you know, depending on if you're going to live longer or shorter, that changes, of course. Uh, but, but the idea is that no matter what you do, you will never have more time. <laughs> and as we go through the day, and I'm sure... I'm sure we've all thought this way. You always feel like you're living in the future, right? We're trying to get, you know, we even use that language. We're trying to get through tasks. We're trying to get things out of the way. I even just said that uh, like a minute ago when I was talking about the book that I'm reading. I wasn't talking about how I'm focusing on that book. I'm talking about how I need to get through it so I can get to Ikigai. So <laughs> even I still, still do that. And so we're always like living in this kind of future mode. And what happens is it stops us from focusing on what's in the present right now, because we always feel like we should be getting more done or that we can get it all done. Uh, and by definition, we literally can't do more than we can do, right? That is, uh, if you actually take that, those words uh, uh, to heart and really think of the actual literal meaning of that, like we literally can't get more done than we can do. So what it what we find is that productivity I, and i think for a lot of people myself included the the definition of productivity is kind of shifting a little bit it's not about getting more done uh really what productivity is when it comes down to it especially according to this book is making hard choices uh unfortunately we as humans hate making hard choices right uh, we don't want to have to like have the difficult conversations to not do something we don't have to admit to ourselves that we can't do something else so we just get this every Ever increasing, uh, ever increasing backlog of things we feel like we should be doing, uh, and then we think in some future time uh, this is all going to happen. So th this book, four thousand weeks, uh, maybe the way I've just described it so it makes it sound depressing, but it's not that way at all. Uh, and it has tips and strategies for dealing with all of this stuff. Um, I really like the concept of having a modestly meaningful life. Uh, I think a lot of times, uh, and I talk about this on an uh, upcoming podcast. Uh, with Alexis Hasselberger, but a lot of times we feel like we should be uh, like changing the world or we should be like doing these like super epic things, which if that is you, that's great. Uh, but there's really nothing wrong with uh, living a modestly meaningful life as well. Uh, so I really like this book. It, it really did uh, cause a shift in myself of the way I think about productivity in general. Uh, and I think uh, anytime something can do that, it's a, it's a good resource. So we'll make sure to have a, a link to that. Um, Marmel, have you, uh, have you heard of this book? Uh, no, I have not, but definitely putting it in my list. <laughs> The cover of the book has a bunch of bruised bananas on it. So, uh, so I don't know, I would have, I would have come up with a different uh, choice for my cover, but Hey, I'm not a, I'm not a book designer or graphic designer. Um, have you, have you, um, how do I say this? Have you found yourself making a similar shift with like away from, uh, checking off boxes or, um, or, or what kind of like, what kind of trends have you seen about that type of thing oh what do you mean when you say boxes like like um, a lot of times we think of productivity and and you know if you go back to like the early days even of the the ae blog frankly in the podcast uh in fact the podcast uh the earlier the early uh you know we're talking about going back to book tool and frog going back to the early days of the podcast i think our tagline was like get more done. <laughs> and it was always about like, you know, checking off, uh, checking off your tasks, like getting more stuff done. Mm. Um, and I think, I think we're seeing a shift now, or this is my personal opinion. We're seeing a shift away from that type of thing. And I was just curious if you've, uh, experienced that in your own like productivity life. Uh, if, if, if you've made that kind of shift. Um, I don't, 
think so, or maybe I have not noticed. But right now, it's still, you know, I start the day um, still with a plan in mind, you know, with the boxes. Now I get it, you know, that with the with the check boxes of what I oh what I need to do. Um, but you know, but I guess the difference is I don't feel a lot of pressure, like. Um, before it would really stress me out if there are some tasks in 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 my to to do list that I do not finish, like oh like why uh, like why could I not finish finish this? I think I had enough time, but I think it's the mindset for me. Like um, for now, it's like it's okay. There's still tomorrow, right? Like. Um, I I did what I could do with the time and the energy that I had today, so that's fine. Like, it, basically, I did the best that I could. Uh, that I did the best um, that I could for that day, and that's fine. So I I think I stopped berating myself for not finishing everything um, on my list. I love that comment about. Um, how it's a mindset shift, because I'm going through something similar right now, like not really related to productivity, but it kind of does in a way, which is a lot of times we do have a choice about how we think about things and react to things. We might not think we do, but we do. For example, uh, right now, my kids are going through soccer tryouts, um, you know, to make certain teams, and I know like there would always be like a bunch of parents on the sidelines and you're like sitting there stressed out and you, maybe your kid makes a good pass and you're looking over to make sure the, the evaluators saw it or they do something not so great. And you're just like, you're like, oh, you can physically feel it. <laughs> um, but this this year, I, I was even saying to another parent, like, I have no stress, like whatever happens, happens, mm-hmm. it's all good. And like, once you decide to make that mindset shift, uh, things become a lot easier. So thanks for that. I agree. <laughs> all right. So those are our books. So uh, Marmel has Ikigai and I have 4,000 weeks. And so let's move on to our tool. So a tool is something that makes us more productive. Uh, it could be an app, could be a physical tool, anything like that. Uh, and Marmel, why don't you start us off with your, with your tool? Mine is kind of embarrassing just because like I've been in Asian efficiency for seven years, if I'm not, if I'm not mistaken. And it probably took me like four years before I got one. And this is an external monitor. <laughs> so, um, so, you know, we always talk about making sure that, you know, when we're, when we're working, we have the right tools and we're able to, to work, you know, productively like ergonomically as well. So I don't know, it took me so so long to finally get one. And I think it was when we were discussing having an external monitor in, in, in Slack with our Productivity Academy um, members, where I, I finally said, you know what, I should just get one. Because I was always hesitating that it would be too cumbersome on, on my desk because I want my desk to be clean, to be, to, you know, minimalist, Marie Kondo style. But once I got my first, because I already have a third one, my first external monitor, I was just blown away. Like, why was, you know, why was I procrastinating on this tool? Like, um, it really helped with my productivity. I have terrible eyesight, by the way. And when I'm working on, let's just say, um, HTML, like in Dreamweaver, it's a lot easier to just look, you know, look at the code and look, look at, uh, look at what you're working. So imagine I, I was working my first la- uh, laptop when I was working, when I started working in AE was an 11 inch MacBook Air. And then I got, you know, the 13 inch MacBook Pro. And, and then that was the laptop that I was using when I finally got the external monitor, which was like, uh, I think it was 24 inches at first and then I got a 27 inch and then finally I got the one that I'm using right now is a 34 inch curved uh, you know LCD so if you do not have an external monitor you just have your laptop I highly recommend that you get one do not be Marmel version 2 and wait for like four years Wait, so all this time I've been working with you, you've been rocking just, literally just your MacBook screen? <laughs> wow, I did not know that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, wow, I did not know that. Yeah, uh, definitely having a, definitely having a, a, a bigger screen is helpful. Uh, this is actually another one which is, is funny timing because 
uh, I use a 27 inch monitor. It's okay. Uh, and then I have my MacBook Pro screen off to my right. Uh, but yesterday I was in Best Buy uh, and I made the mistake of looking at those new Apple studio displays. Uh, wow. And I was just looking at it and I'm like, there's no way I'm not so sure. I don't think I can justify this, uh, especially for the cost of it. But man, it just looks so good, especially with my poor eyesight as well. And I, I'm like, the wheels are spinning. Uh, having two two big displays uh, would be pretty awesome. Uh, now, you said you had a curved LCD. Um, what do you like about that, if 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 anything? Um, I think it's more of it's more like less strain on my eyes. I just know you when you when you use like just you know the regular straight one and the curved one, you just when 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 you shift to the curve, I don't know. My eyes just told me that hey, Marmel, I really like this better. <laughs> hey, if you like it, you like it. That's that's the important thing. You got to stare at that thing for hours a day, so it's got to yes. be something you like. At least that's what I'm telling myself as I'm walking out of Best Buy. <laughs> It's funny how you can justify things that you use all day long. Uh, all right. Well, that is a great pick, especially if you are uh, working off your laptop screen and you're, you've been resisting getting a, uh, an external monitor. Uh, definitely recommend that. Uh, my pick is the Elgato Stream Deck. And this is something that I've mentioned on the podcast before uh, and is I'm using more and more every day. In fact, I have a recurring task in my OmniFocus uh, that says optimize Stream Deck. And I try to like make one change, one little improvement, automate one more thing uh, every day. I don't, you know, I don't do it every day, but uh, at least the task is there. And so what an, a Stream Deck is, is a device that sits on your desk a physical device with push buttons, like literal push buttons <laughs> that you can configure. So the pushing those buttons does different things. And it, the reason it's called a stream deck is it was actually designed for like gamers and live streamers and that sort of thing. Uh, but people figured out pretty quickly that you can use it for productivity functions as well. So I have different buttons that do different things. I have uh, buttons that are setups. So for example, when I walk into my office in the morning, I, I press a button uh, with a picture of a sun on it. You can change the pictures. Uh, it's called my morning setup. And so that opens all my apps that I use. It opens all my browser windows, browser tabs, puts it, rearranges them exactly where I want them. And so everything's set up for me to get started with just one press. Um, I have similar things for like uh, podcasting. So everything I need to record these podcasts, I press a button, it creates the folders, it opens the apps, it positions the show notes, uh, like does all those things just with one, uh, one push button. Uh, so that's another thing. Uh, you can also have it do things like control zoom. So all the stuff that I do uh, with the podcast and with meetings and stuff like that, like turning on and off camera, turning on and off mic, screen sharing, recording, all that stuff. Uh, I do it all with my stream deck. Uh, you can have uh, buttons go to different websites like our Zoom uh, meetings and all that sort of stuff. Uh, and I've one thing I've been doing lately is going down the rabbit hole of controlling OmniFocus uh, with buttons as well, because you can assign uh, different profiles to different apps. Uh, so a lot of things I do with OmniFocus with like deferring tasks, um, moving tasks around, going to different perspectives and that sort of thing. Uh, I just do with push buttons on my stream deck too. So it's something that I've been using more and more. Um, I would say you can do a lot more productivity stuff on the Mac uh, than on Windows. Not so much because Mac versus Windows, but there's a, a Mac app called Keyboard Maestro that the Stream Deck works really well with. And with Keyboard Maestro, you can literally do anything on, on your Mac. Um, so that helps with, key, with, and it has Stream Deck integration. Uh, but even if you use Windows, uh, I think it can help a lot. I know uh, we keep bringing up Alice on the show. I know uh, after I wrote a, an article on the AE blog, which we'll link to, uh, when, talking about how I use the Stream Deck, uh, I know she went out and bought some. And I know some other listeners and uh, Productivity Academy members have mentioned that they did the same thing. Uh, so yeah, I really recommend giving it a try. And uh, there, it comes in different sizes. There's like 
I think there's a six button one. Uh, I don't recommend that one. It's not super useful. Um, the one I have is, uh, I'm counting right now, I'm not good at math, <laughs> uh, 18 buttons, I think. Uh, and uh, that one's pretty good. Uh, there's also a bigger one, the 32 buttons that all the nerds are buying, uh, the productivity nerds are buying. Uh, that one's a little big for me, uh, but sometimes I do kind of wish I had it because it just lets you do uh, more things without having to change pages and stuff like that. Uh, but yeah, if you're somebody who wants to like up your productivity and doesn't mind uh, another thing on your desk, uh, it's, uh, it's really, really cool. It's the Elgato Stream Deck. Um, Marmel, I know you've heard me talking about it. Uh, do, you, do you see a, 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 a place for a Stream Deck in your life or are you uh, too intent on Marie Kondoing your desk, which I totally get? No, I cannot do Marie Kondo anymore because of my huge ass screen, but it's <laughs> in my cart already. I still have not checked checked out, <laughs> but it's already there. But it's good that you mentioned that because I put in the, the six button one. It's good that you mentioned that it's all better to get the 18 button one. So uh, yeah, like I said, I'm bad at math. It's actually 15 buttons, not 18. I was <laughs> so sorry for uh, <laughs> sorry for promising three extra buttons there. But uh, yeah, I definitely would not get the me personally. I would not get the six button one um, because it's just a little limiting. Uh, the 32 button is probably the best to get, uh, but it, I just didn't feel like spending the money at that time, uh, and. Uh, and it, like I said, it is bigger, uh, but it's not that much bigger than the 15 one, frankly. So um, yeah, that would be my recommendation. So what you, what you need to do is uh, next time there's something uh, where maybe there's like some sort of bonus or target we have internally, you can uh, try and talk Tan into buying you a stream deck. <laughs> All right, so those are our tools uh, for uh, Marmel. It's an external monitor or dual monitor. For myself, it's the Elgato Stream Deck. Uh, now let's go into our frog. So these are things, and it doesn't have to be work-related. It could, it doesn't have to be, but something that we're focusing on these days, uh, something that's really taking up a lot of our time, energy, or attention. Uh, and uh, like we've done in the other categories, Marmel, I'll let you, uh, I'll let you go first. Yeah, uh, for my frog work, why is I since Brooks mentioned I'm, I'm a scrum master. So basically um, my focus uh, every single day is making sure that we hit our, our sprint goals. Um, so we do have a, a blog post and we did talk about it in the, in the podcast as well. Like in Asian efficiency, we practice scrum and we have, you know, we have sprints. Um, so, and every sprint we have priorities. So whatever the team's priorities are, those are, those uh, those are basically what I'm I'm focusing on and making sure that uh, making sure that the tasks on our board are moving that tasks are getting done so that at the end of the sprint you know a majority if not all of the tasks that we set out to do for that sprint are um are all done okay so but uh, aside from work um might sound really cliche or or, or what but I am uh, this 2022. I, I'm focusing on on myself, on my mental health, on my happiness, you know, making time for my sessions and doing the finally doing the homework given by, you know, by my by my therapist and making sure I continue to to meditate. Um, yeah, um, one thing that I still need to do that was recommended was actually to to do yoga. I'm not yet ready. So I'm mentally preparing myself to do that. And, and my friends have been like, they'll, they'll go with me to, to, to the yoga studio just to get me out there. Is that like hot yoga or just like, is there a certain type of yoga or, uh, or you don't even know yet? Cause you haven't done it. I don't think we have hot yoga here. I think it's just the normal people yoga. <laughs> I guess just being in the Philippines, it's probably hot yoga it's anyway, hot no matter what you do. <laughs> um, you mentioned like, uh, uh, you know, homework from your therapist and that sort of thing. Are there any specific, I mean, you don't have to get into particular details, but in general, are, is there any like exercises or things that uh, you've found really effective that, you know, might help other people listening? Um, it's more uh, with the sessions that I'm doing right now. It's more of writing, which is a bit easy for me because I already journal. It's just that, you know, um, there are prompts um, that 
you know on 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 my end my therapist uh, gave me like what you know what to write about um there are special oca- special occasions like there are special occasions where i I, uh, I need to write about something else for example if i'm having like an anxiety attack then i write uh, i write about that so basically that would prompt me and then we discuss it and then we discuss it during our session yeah, I think that would be really helpful. And I'm guarantee there's a lot of listeners that uh, could benefit a lot from that. So uh, yeah, definitely talk to somebody if you think it could be helpful. Uh, because uh, no matter what you're going through, I guarantee you uh, a therapist, counselor, whatever, uh, has seen it before and ha- has tools to to help uh, help you deal with it. So, or uh, maybe deal with it isn't the right word, but tools that can help. So definitely recommend uh, uh, talking to somebody because it's uh, incredibly helpful. Uh, all right, so that is uh, Marmel's uh, frog. Uh, so my frog is uh, work-wise, we have a pretty big project on the go right now to uh, make our Productivity Academy better than ever. So uh, pretty much all the time when I'm not podcasting, I'm working on that. So I'm sure there'll be more de- details on that later. Uh, but uh, other than that, um, the thing that's really taking up a lot of our time, other than those soccer tryouts I mentioned, is uh, we have this big family week-long hike on uh, what's called the West Coast Trail. Uh, is uh, a trail along the coast of Vancouver Island, which is just off the coast uh, of British Columbia. Uh, and you basically spend a week going through mud, going over ladders, um, hiking on beaches, there's wolves, there's bears, there's cougars, <laughs> or mountain lions, some people might call them. Um, and, uh, and you know, there's no like electricity or anything like that. So you got to pack all your own food and stuff like that. Uh, and so planning and getting organized for that, my wife and I have done some smaller trips like that, but we've never done a big one. Um, and this time, uh, it's our 20th anniversary, which is kind of what is prompting it, decided to do that. Uh, but we're taking my teenage sons along, uh, who I have somehow raised as massive city boys who are not uh, really not uh, used to that sort of thing. So it's like figuring out all the gear we need uh, for them, especially, uh, and, uh, you know, getting in condition for this uh, craziness. So that's, uh, that's what we're kind of like focusing on right now. Uh, Marmel, any, uh, any week long hikes in the, in the Philippines? No, (laughs) it's too hot. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I can't even, I can't even, uh, I can't even imagine. I mean, I've only been to the Philippines twice and I think from what it can get, it wasn't that hot there when I was there. Uh, but yeah, I guess, uh, I guess even the concept of that would be unthinkable. (laughs) (laughs) The longest hike that, that, um, that I did was just, I think just two days and we were going up the mountain. So it was pretty cold because if you just hike, no, you will die of heat exhaustion. <laughs> we don't have bears, but yeah, the heat. <laughs> are there any, uh, I don't even know, are there any uh, animals you need to be worried about in the Philippines? I don't, I don't even know. Are there, are there like animals that will attack humans or anything like that? Or is Philippines pretty, uh, pretty safe that way? Well, it depends on on where where you go. But even if you like, if you go to like, there's a hiking place, uh, place here they're in, I think it's only snakes that's it but we don't I have don't bears we don't have mountain lions and you know I think I think I'm happy I, like I'll just lo- look at videos <laughs> Well, I'd say snakes are enough. So good to know. All right. <laughs> All right. So those are our frogs. So Marmel's is uh, uh, doing uh, doing the homework from uh, therapists and focusing on mental health, which is great, uh, as well as hitting sprinkles. And mine is uh, working on the Productivity Academy and uh, that West Coast Trail hike. Uh, we're going to wrap this up, but we thought we would share some books, tools, and frogs from the community. We record these live streams with our Productivity Academy members and our TPS Plus members. So that's our like special upgraded version of the podcast where you get uh, kind of like what I was talking about with YouTube premium, where you get the, the podcast ad free, you get it a week early uh, and great benefits like that. So you can go to the productivity show.com forward slash plus. And uh, some of our uh, listeners that are in the live stream, Nico, uh, her book that she recommends are find your why by Simon Sinek, uh, which is another of those books where everybody around me has read except for me. <laughs> so that one is definitely going to go on my list. Also, The War of Art by Stephen Pressfield, which I have read and is a great book. Um, for the tool, uh, Nico says Trello. Uh, 
uh, says my savior, which I know a lot of people feel that about Trello. So that's a good one. And for the frog is sorting out the various inboxes, uh, like uh, gone too many weeks without doing GTD review. And yeah, if, we, if one skips your review, uh, then that can happen. Uh, Haley recommends Stolen Focus by Johan Hari, uh, the book uh, that's really, really helpful for that. And the frog is uh, selling the house in Houston and moving to Asheville. And yeah, moving is no joke. So, uh, so uh, respect for that, because I, I hate moving so much. I hope to never move again, but I'm sure it's going to happen. Uh, awesome. So Marmel, thank you so much for being here and sharing your books, your tools, and your frogs. Like I said, we'll have links to everything in the show notes at theproductivityshow.com forward slash 404. Uh, we always like to end these episodes with our action steps. So I would say as an action step for this one, identify what is your book? Like what's a book that you would recommend to others and uh, make that recommendation to somebody who can benefit from it. Same thing with your tool. What is a tool that really helps you be productive? And again, share that with somebody that you think could benefit. And for your frog, make sure you set at least a little bit of time this week. This is a uh, Monday. So this week, set aside time to work on your frog at least a little bit. On uh, our next episode, we will be talking about how to adapt getting things done, GTD to your needs. And thank you again, Marmel, for being here. And thanks again for listening. We'll see you next Productive Monday.